Lesson 16, Multiplication of Polynomials and Division of Polynomials. The first thing we're going to talk about is multiplication of polynomials. Okay, in just quick review, a polynomial is a algebraic expression in which there's more than one term. Okay, poly means many. Um, there are three different kinds of polynomials. You've got monomials, binomials, trinomials, and then polynomials would cover anything that's three terms or more. When we multiply polynomials, there's two things that we need to remember. In multiplication of polynomials, we need to first use the distributive property to multiply. We use the distributive property to multiply. And once each term has been multiplied, then we combine like terms. Okay, keep in mind that a like term is a term in which the variable parts are identical. Coefficients don't have to be the same, but the variable part needs to be identical. Right? So let's just look at an example of multiplication of polynomials. We have 2x plus 2 times 3x squared minus 5x plus 2. All right, the first thing we want to do is use the distributive property to multiply. In doing the distributive property, we're going to go first term in the first polynomial to every term in the second polynomial expression. All right, so let's go 2x times 3x squared. 2x times 3x squared. We multiply coefficient times coefficient. 2 times 3 is 6. 1x times x squared gives me x cubed. All right, so we have 6x cubed. Second uh, term of multiplication, 2x times negative 5x gives me negative 10x squared. 2x times positive 2 gives me plus 4x. All right, so that's the first term in the first polynomial expression to every term in the second polynomial expression. All right, then we're going to go second term in the first expression to every term in the second. All right, so we have 2 times 3x squared, which gives me 6x squared. 2 times negative 5, 5x gives me negative 10x, and 2 times 2 is 4. All right, so we've used the distributive multi property, and we have multiplied to give me 6x cubed minus 10x squared plus 4x plus 6x squared minus 10x plus 4. Okay, now we're going to combine like terms. When writing answers to multiplication of polynomials, make sure you write in descending order of terms, meaning the biggest exponent value comes first. All right, so our biggest exponent value is x cubed. So we have 6x cubed. Okay, there is nothing else to combine it with. The next would be x squared. We have negative 10x squared plus 6x squared. And if we combine those terms, we get minus 4x squared. The next term is 4x and negative 10x. If we combine those, we get minus 6x. And then plus 4 has nothing else to combine itself with. That is multiplication of polynomials. We multiply through using the distributive property and then combine like terms. I'm going to give you one more. I want you to try this one on your own. We have 3x squared minus 2x minus 2 times x minus 2. All right, so you're going to use the distributive property to multiply and then finish by combining like terms. Go ahead and pause the video, try this one, and we'll come back to it. The next thing that we're going to talk about is division of polynomials. This is a little more complicated than multiplication, but if you follow the steps and you make sure that you're thorough, it won't be too bad. All right, so in division of polynomials, we're going to work through an example while we work through some steps. Okay, so the example that we're doing is we are dividing two plus 5x minus 2x squared plus 5x cubed by negative 4 plus x. We're dividing 2 plus 5x minus 2x squared plus 5x cubed by negative 4 plus x. All right, just quick review in division. Remember, the divisor is the number doing the dividing, and the dividend is the number that's being divided. All right, so in this case, this term here is the dividend. 
while this term here is the divisor. Okay, so just keep that in mind. The first step is to set up the division problem with both the divisor and dividend in descending order of exponents. Okay, so that means that the biggest power comes first, followed by the, the lesser. Okay, so set up the division problem. in descending order of variables. That is the division problem in descending order of variables. So when I look at my dividend, and I've got my division problem, we're going to do descending order. So the biggest is the 5x cubed. The next one is x squared, so we have minus 2x squared plus 5x plus 2. All right, so everything is in descending order. We've got 3, 2, 1, and no exponent. And in the divisor, we have x minus 4. Okay, so make sure your variable term comes first. Okay, second step is we're going to compare first term to first term. Okay, so compare the first term. In the division problem, we're only ever looking at x can x go into the next term? We only use the minus 4 or the term following the x in order to complete our multiplication. All right, so how, what do we need to multiply x by to give me 5x cubed? What do we multiply x by to give me 5x cubed? That would be 5x squared. Now, since it's squared, we need to write our quotient above the squared term that's in the dividend. So since the x squared term is here in the dividend, we're going to write 5x squared above it in the quotient. Okay, then we multiply through. 5x squared times x gives me 5x cubed. 5x squared times negative 4 gives me negative 20x squared. Okay, we multiply through just like regular long division. Then we subtract. Now when we subtract, that means we're changing all of the signs in our second term. 5x cubed minus 5x cubed is nothing. Negative 2x squared plus 20x squared gives me 18x squared. So we bring that down as well as our plus 5x down. Okay? So we compare the first terms and we divide. So step three, we're going to divide and multiply through. Just like in long division. Okay. So we're going to go again. Again, we're comparing x, which is the first term, to now the first term in what we had subtracted. So what, what times x gives me 18x squared? Well, that would be 18x. So we're going to add 18x to my quotient, and then we multiply through. 18x times x gives me 18x squared. And 18x times negative 4 will give me 72, negative 72x. Okay, again, we're subtracting, so we're changing all of the signs. 18x squared minus 18x squared is nothing. 5x squared plus 72x squared gives me 77x, and bring down the plus 2. Okay, well then what times x gives me 77x? That would be 77. So we multiply through again. 77x uh, times x gives me 77x. 77 times negative 4 gives me 308. So we have minus 308. And we subtract again. Okay. Now, if we subtract, we're changing the signs, which means when I subtract this, I'm going to have a, a remainder of 310. Okay. We're going to write our remainders as a fraction. So it's going to be plus 310 over x minus 4. And remember, remainder goes over the divisor um, and when we write it as a fraction. Okay, so we divide through and multiply, and then we write the remainder as a fraction. All right, until you get the hang of it, this probably will be a little bit complicated, but there's going to be problems like this um, in the next several months and weeks of doing this. Um, so you'll get lots of practice in. All right. One thing that we didn't mention 
in this particular example because it didn't apply, um, is that what happens if we don't have a powered turn? All right, we're going to look at an example of this. Um, here's what I mean. In our division problem, the next one we're do, we are going to divide negative 6 plus x cubed by negative 2 plus x. Now, if we write this in descending order, we're going to have x cubed minus 6 in our dividend. However, we need to represent each variable term. So, if one is not mentioned in the problem, we need to put it in our dividend with a zero in front of it. Right? So, since x squared and an x term aren't represented in the problem, we're still going to represent them in our dividend by putting zero x squared and zero x. Okay, this is very important. Thing. Every single variable term must be represented. Okay, and then I never divide we have x minus 2. Now we can start the division process. We've written out our, our problem using a dividend and divisor. Okay, now we're going to compare the first terms, x and x cubed. Well, what times x cubed gives me, uh, excuse me, what times x gives me x cubed? That would be x squared. So above our x squared term, we're multiplying by x squared. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times 2 gives me minus 2x squared. That's why it's important to have the x squared term in the di dividend, so that you have something to subtract it with. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck. All right, so we subtract, which means all of the signs change. x cubed minus x cubed is nothing. 0x squared plus 2x squared is 2x squared. Bring down the 0x term, and we're going to go again. Compare first term to first term. What times x gives me 2x squared? That's going to be 2x. So we add 2x to our quotient. 2x times x gives me 2x squared. 2x times negative 2 gives me minus 4x. Again, we subtract, so we change all the signs. 2x squared minus 2x squared is nothing. 0x plus 4x gives me 4x. And we bring down our minus 6. Again, first term and first term. What times x gives me 4x? 4. So we add 4 to our quotient and we multiply through. 4 times x gives me 4x. 4 times negative 2 gives me negative 8. And we subtract and we change all the signs. 4x minus 4x is nothing. Negative 6 plus 8 is 2. And that is our remainder, so we're going to add that to the end. Plus 2 over x minus 2. And that is the final solution. More often than not, in these problems, you're going to end up with the remainder. Um, but very rarely, it may divide out evenly. This last one, I want you to go ahead and give it a shot on your own. I know some of you are going to be confused, and some of you, um, this is just going to take a lot of practice. But I want you to try this on your own. Give it a shot and see what we come up with. I'm actually going to set the problem up for you. All right, so we have in our dividend 4x cubed minus 3x squared plus 7x plus 3. And it's being divided by x minus 3. All right, this is the example I want you to try on your own. And we will check it when we come back into class.